All right, we're back here with Ivy. Um, we're going to go ahead and get our um, IV catheter inserted so that we can get her hooked up to this IV. Um, I'm going to verify my patient, um, have her state her name and date of birth and, and cross-reference that with her medical record. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and, um, and look at her hands. In this case, we're using her hand. Um, generally, you would apply a tourniquet four to eight inches above where you're going to be placing or where you're going to be looking at um, her veins. Um, in this case, we don't have that much room, so I'm going to apply it a little higher here. But um, I just kind of want to check things out at this point and see where I'm going to go, kind of get my game plan together. Um, after I apply the tourniquet, though, I am going to want to look for a radial pulse just to make sure that I don't have it on too tight. Um, Still want some blood flowing. So I see a really good vein on her right here. Um, I think we'll use that one. So once I found that, I can undo her tourniquet so that she's comfortable. And I can go gather some supplies. Um, I'm going to be using a 20 gauge IV catheter. Um, I need a saline lock tip and a few things for the dressing, a gauze and a... Um, a IV secure. So um, once I have all that together, I can go back, go ahead and go back, um, wash my hands, make sure that I'm maintaining a good, clean, safe environment. Um, and then I'm going to place this handy dandy little pad underneath her to help save the linen. And after I've washed my hands, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. Um, I like to have my stuff set up so that I'm ready to go with it. But I want them to still be sterile, so I'm going to just go ahead and leave them there. Oh. So, identified my spot. I'm going to use an alcohol to get that area nice and clean. And then something handy I learned from my phlebotomy um, clinical was that she likes to um, wipe off both ends of her fingers so that she, those are still clean and she can anchor the vein and all that good stuff. So, um, make sure that those are clean when I'm if I do anything from there. So with this, I want to make sure that um, I've loosened the catheter tip a little bit um, so that, oh, geez, sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. Loosen the catheter tip a little bit so that it, I can advance it easier um, after I get the, after I get it placed. So I'm gonna loosen that up a little bit and then I can go ahead and uncap my needle. So I wanna um, anchor the vein here and insert at a 30 to 45 degree angle um, right above or beside the vein, bevel side or bevel end up. And once that flashes, I can go ahead and advance the catheter. And do my tourniquet. Take out the needle. And I'm gonna keep my um, finger here. I wanna make sure that it's inserted, but also to stop the blood flow there so that we don't have a big dry mess. Discard that. And then I'm gonna want to Get my, oh, saline lock end on as soon as I can. And I want to make sure that that is stabilized so that I'm not twisting that catheter inside the vein. So once that's on, I can go ahead and grab one of my 
swatches. I want to use about, I could have had that ready. So I'm still going to make sure that that's stabilized. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flush this with about five mils of saline. Make sure that we have everything in working order. Slowly, and as I'm doing this, I'm also going to want to make sure that I'm not seeing any um, infiltration signs, or I want to make sure that the patient isn't experiencing any discomfort. So, once I've established that that's like in the right spot and it's doing what it needs to do, I can go ahead and unhook that. And then I can use my gauze as an anchor here. Underneath, okay. And See, um, well, I kind of want to tape it probably before I think we still have some over here. Because it would help if I didn't have the grass in there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Poor hand. Okay. So once that's anchored and in place, then I'm going to slide my gauze in. Oh, gosh, we're falling apart. Sorry. What are we doing? That on very good. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So then we can, once we've got that all anchored and we've got the gauze in place, um, I can label my um, my covering with uh, the date, my initials, um, and then I'm also going to want to label the needle gauge um, on here as well, so that. So that it, when the ID is pulled, um, don't mind the circus this is, that is about to enter. Um, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm not covering the port and I can still have Good easy access to that. Because my gloves are sticking to all this stuff. They're too big. Okay. So once we have all that in place and we've established that it's um, the, the patency of it, I can just go ahead and discard my materials. And grab our setup here. Since it's all preset and ready to go with the drop rate, all I have to do is, just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. And then you can go ahead and attach your tubing to your ID. Uh, make 
make sure that you don't forget to unplant it before you leave the room and it starts. <laughs> All right, so I want to look and make sure that I still have the correct drop rate before I go. And I'm also going to want to make sure that I'm anchoring this tubing on the patient's hand to avoid it getting caught on anything and getting ripped out on accident. I think probably it would be the best to go. Well, no, it's not going to go that way. So we'll go here, but just make sure that... Um, it's secured really good so that that patient doesn't accidentally run away with it, rip it off. Um, IV pole would get that, we'd get that set up really good so that it was comfortable for them. Um, okay, so I would definitely want to educate and make sure that um, my patient knew how to take care of um, how to take care of this as far as keeping it clean, making sure that it's dry. If they're going to shower, we need to cover it. And then I would want to go back and document um, all kinds of things. <laughs> the solution and um, the IV placement, the needle gauge that I use, the tolerance um, to the procedure, as well as um, anything that maybe didn't go as smoothly as Plan. I'm going to chart the um, infusion rate and um, I'm going to make sure the patient doesn't have any questions and I'm going to remove this um, little sheet out from under them because that's not very comfortable. I'm going to make sure that they are comfortable before I leave the room. And then um, probably another thing I would do right off the bat that I forgot to mention, I just realized, is... Um, Check to make sure that I have verified with them any allergies that they might have. Um, I, I just realized that this patient has a allergy to latex, so I'd want to make sure that my tourniquet and my gloves were latex free before I did any of this. Um, just something I forgot to mention at the beginning. So, with all that being said, I think we're good to go here.